Chapter 33 Trayden Nelson Are you sure this is the right house? Jaron pulled into Ellie's driveway. The house number was the same. The street was the same. The neighbor's house looked the same with the large fence and beware of dog sign. Everything else was right, but the house in front of them looked like a strange photoshopped version of the house. Everything else was right, but the house in front of them looked like a strange photoshopped version of the house Trayden visited last week. Only one week and the world felt like it had tipped up and started walking on its hands. Yes, Trayden said, it's the right house. It looks like someone mowed the lawn and picked up the kids' toys. They might have even painted the door. It does look staged to sell, Jaron said. Are they planning on moving? No, I was here a couple days ago, and there were no packing boxes. There's no way. They both stepped out of the car and saw the for sale sign at the same time. The breeze picked up and sent the sign knocking against the post with an eerily rhythmic thud, thud, thud. She didn't tell me they were moving, Trayden said. This is weird. I just want to check in on her, make sure she's okay. You made it pretty clear she didn't want to be serious with you. Don't cross the line into stalking mode. I'm not here to ask her out again or pressure her. I'm worried about her, that's all. A friend can worry. What do you know about stalking anyway? Absolutely nothing. I worry more about breaking hearts when they come begging. Shut up. Shutting up, Jaren said, raising both hands in the air. Trayden stepped up to the door. Jaren pushed a bush aside and peeked through the front room window. What are you doing? There's no one home, Jaren said, hand over his eyes as he pressed his face up to the glass. Look, they've already moved out the furniture and cleaned the windows. Look at this thing. I left a smudge with my breath. Jaren rubbed his sleeve against the spotless window. These weren't details Trayden would normally notice, but he was almost 100% sure there had at least been some hard water stains on the outside of the window. These ones were spotless. Checking the neighborhood to make sure there weren't any nosy neighbors watching, Trayden joined Jaren at the window. Jaren was right. There was no furniture. The house was empty. He could see from the window seat to the kitchen where he'd sat at the table eating spaghetti with the kids. He'd picked up Ellie for a date on Wednesday. Now it was Monday. Barely four days. An entire household picked up and moved with a husband on life support and kids in foster care and a mom working two jobs? It was impossible. She would have at least told me she was leaving. Trayden pulled out his phone to check for texts, like there would be a new one from her, because he willed it. Would she? Jaren raised his eyebrows, a sympathetic invite to accept reality. Trayden jumped back onto the porch and knocked. Hard. The door swung open. The latch had barely been resting against the doorframe. The entry hall was immaculate. The rack that had been loaded with kids' coats and backpacks was gone. The shoes from the floor? Gone. There weren't even any holes in the wall from where the rack had been hanging. Trayden felt a wave of dizziness, the hall warping and waving in his vision, looking twice as long and half as wide. He leaned against the doorframe and closed his eyes. He felt pressure on his arm. Take it easy, Jaron said. Deep breaths. Breakups are hard. Trayden felt a surge of anger that cleared his head. This isn't a breakup. Something is wrong. People are missing. This whole family could be in danger. Ellie was scared of something since I met her. Maybe they finally caught up with her. Who? I don't know. Trayden pushed off the wall. Maybe they left a ransom note, or a clue, or something. This isn't an episode of Unsolved Crimes. They really could have moved. Trayden whirled around. Jaren still hadn't stepped inside. And your dad could totally be himself and set fire to his own business. Jaren gripped the railing on the porch, and a muscle flexed in his jaw. Don't bring my dad into this. I'm sorry, Trayden rubbed his eyes, trying to get them to focus. He swallowed to push the nausea back. I shouldn't have said that. I've tossed and turned about it all weekend while you were in the hospital. I didn't want to believe you, but I saw it too. My dad never acted like that, never lost his temper like that. Even before, when he was a bad dad, but that has nothing to do with this. With a girl who moved away with her family. It's totally normal, Trayden shook his head. No. No, this isn't normal, and Ellie wasn't normal. She was special. Every girl is special. No, I mean she was different than us. Trayden had promised not to tell, but that was to protect her. If she was already gone, then he needed Jaren's help to find her. She was a descendant of angels. She could do things. Make people ignore her. She's the one who healed Rachel when she landed on her neck. You've lost your mind, Jaren said, backing up on the porch. Let me take you back to the hospital, because you're delusional. Wait. Drayden reached out and pulled Jaren into the house. 
He shut the door behind them before Jaron could leave, before a neighbor noticed them standing in the doorway. Let's walk through this. Rachel got hurt. Do you remember? Again, Jaron had to turn his head to get his emotions under control. It was close, I admit. I thought she'd broken her neck. But she got right up. She wasn't hurt. She was, Trayden said, squeezing Jaron's arm. I saw Ellie touch her. No one else paid attention because she can do that thing with people's energy, make them not notice her. But I saw her. She healed Rachel. It's because of Ellie that Rachel is okay. We owe it to Ellie to make sure she's okay. Look at me. Jaron took Trayden's face in both hands. I want you to listen to what you're saying. There is a girl at school that is an angel and can heal people. Come on, dude. This is the real world. Trayden didn't knock Jaron's hands away like he wanted to. He reached out and grabbed Jaron's shirt, pulling the fabric into his fist and lifting. Both of them were breathing hard, tensed. Trayden could see Jaron getting ready to fight back. Do it. Trayden pushed Jaron against the wall. Hit me. See if it wakes me up. See if it makes the world make sense because it doesn't anymore. Don't you get it? Nothing makes sense anymore. If we can agree that your dad isn't your dad, if we believe he was possessed or taken over by something completely different, then how far of a stretch is it to believe there is the opposite of that evil? If there are things that possess people, then maybe there is something out there that can fight it. If there is sorrow, there can be joy. If there is water, somewhere there's fire. If there are demons out there with a triangle on their neck that can murder children and leave them lying in their own blood, maybe, just maybe, there are angels. Jaron's fingers tightened, his thumbs digging into Trayden's neck. For a moment, Trayden was worried he'd really have to fight his friend. But then Jaron sagged. He dropped his hand from Trayden's face and neck. He grabbed Trayden's wrists and shoved his hands off his shirt. Trayden let go and put his palms forward in a gesture of peace. I've always believed that I was in control, Jaron said, that I could figure things out on my own if I needed to, but in a world that is that messed up, if there are these greater powers fighting over our heads, what's the point? What are we fighting for? Trayden put his hand on Jaron's shoulder. He could read his friend's pain, how long he had been fighting to impress his dad, what this failure felt like for him, and now his dad was gone. Somehow, in a way they didn't understand, in a way that left them helpless to know what to do. Maybe our job is to save an angel, keep the world a little brighter, one girl at a time. Jaron rolled his eyes. Trayden could tell it was as much to hide his emotions as it was to make fun of him. It still helped break the tension that had twisted up between them. You really are a hopeless romantic. I have to have some hope, or I wouldn't be here. Have you thought about the consequences of stalking someone descended from angels? They might have a higher court if she presses charges. I'm not stalking, Trayden said. If we find her and she's fine, I'll back off. I promise. You don't have to promise me. There was a pause, but there didn't seem to be a lot more to say. I'll check the bedrooms. Jaren moved through the living room and down the other hallway. Trayden opened the bedroom where Nolan Grayson had been. There was no medical equipment, no bed, an empty room. Jaren came back. I want to get a number for their cleaning company. There isn't a speck of dust anywhere, not even a smudge on the glass in the bathroom. It's too clean. Like cleaning up before the cops sweep for evidence. That's a dark twist to your doubt. Let's just say, Jaren said, running his finger across the windowsill in a white glove check, I'm starting to come around to your way of thinking. This doesn't feel like the normal state of a house after a frantic move. A wave of nausea hit Trayden. He thought about Ellie, somewhere in the dark, alone. He saw her eyes when he closed his and imagined her facing down a powerful enemy, one he couldn't see or even imagine. Whoa, Jaren said. You're looking pale. I mean, even for a white guy. You better sit down before you fall and get your blood all over this clean crime scene. Trayden stumbled over to the window seat. Jaren sat down beside him. Let's walk through this logically. Jaron said. Where could we get information about Ellie and the family she was living with? Did you say Gabe helps people? Saves lost kids or something? I think he's out of town. Besides, I don't think he'll believe us. Jaron scoffed. I'm not sure I believe us. Maybe we can track down the rest of the family, Trayden said. They're in the system. Let's try the foster care office. They can't have just disappeared. 